We begin with the continued fallout from the biggest deal at the deadline. Now, there's only one L in Brooklyn, but the Nets have racked up 11 of them in a row with the last two losses coming on the heels of dealing James Harden to the 76ers in a package that got them Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, and Andre Drummond. The Nets' recent skid and the trade has left the mic open for plenty of conversation. From our Adrian Wojnarowski, the Brooklyn Nets are trading James Harden to Philadelphia for the 76ers. Ben Simmons? I'm not surprised. I have not talked to James about unhappiness other than just typical day-to-day, -day, how can we make this thing better? Uh, now that's official, I, I think we can wish him well. And for me, uh, I just want everybody to be happy. You know, you never re really know what people they're going to decide to do. Um, I can't really say that you, you feel that in the locker room, so to say, but, um, you know, we get hints. This was something that um, James and myself talked about over the last few days. And these decisions to, to move on from a player like that of that caliber are never easy ones. James has been up front from day one was, you know, the clock is ticking for him. He wants to win a championship and, and, and we do too. With James Harden and one of the best players in the league, uh, you know, MVP, pretty exciting. And with that, James Harden joined the Sixers earlier this morning. Harden attended practice and was apparently very excited. This photo was taken and posted by the Sixers' Twitter page. Take a look here. It looks like the Sixers <laughs> are, on, are good with their side of the deal here. Now, on Monday, the Sixers said that Harden would be out through the All-Star break as he continues to rehab his hamstring, meaning he won't participate in the All-Star game despite being picked uh, last amongst that particular group on TNT the other night. But Ramona, the Sixers appear to have been Harden's first pick in this particular case, having asked for a trade to Philly, which he was ultimately granted. So how did his wishes affect Brooklyn's strategy at the deadline? I think what was complicated is that you saw what he, how he was playing. You saw, you heard what he was saying behind the scenes. But when James would talk to Sean Marks or Steve Nash, Joe Sy, the owner of the team, he would say, like, don't believe all these rumors unless you hear it directly from me. And I think what was hard for the, the Nets, which was, okay, what we, what we see and on the court and what we hear off the court are not matching what you're saying. And eventually, very late in the process, as the deadline was approaching, James Harden did end up FaceTiming with Sean Marks and with Joseph Sy, the owner, and saying, I would prefer to be in Philadelphia. And so he was a man of his word. He said, when, when there's a problem, you'll hear it directly from me. Um, FaceTime to FaceTime. And I know some people are like, oh, you couldn't meet with him. FaceTime is better than text. FaceTime I'll say that. Better, better to break up over FaceTime than text. And also logistical issues, okay? Yeah. They were, you know. <laughs> um, and then afterwards, you know, this is the, the part that I think is, is interesting. He, they made a decision, that, okay, we're gonna, you're not going to play until after this trade deadline because we, you know, we'll right. have to get what we want for you. Mm -hmm. um, but that was really late in the process that he finally said that to them. And it gave them a very limited, you know, they had a posture of, you know what, everybody just hang tight. And uh, when we get Kevin Durant back, it's going to go better. We, uh, James will turn around. It, things will. But when he finally said, "I, wa I want to be in Philly long term, and I want to be there if you can make that happen, great." Um, that's when I think everybody realized, okay, there's there's momentum for a deal now. And also, he left. He went to Houston. He didn't, he didn't go with the team and stay with the team. He was in Houston for that trade deadline. Hmm. The hardest part for me when you look at you know the James Harden situation is that. You understand, Kyrie said it. You just want players to be happy. That's that's yeah. that's really all you truly want. But there's also a little bit you would think responsibility. And if he's going to be the type of player that's going to lead to a championship, you have to kind of set the bar. When you're not happy, there's a lack of professionalism that just flows through. And so you can be excited that you have James Harden, but. The real thing that you want to focus on if you're Philly and you're Philly fans mm -hmm. is a happy James Harden because an unhappy or a this isn't great James Harden, he just hasn't been giving the effort even consistently. Let's look at other players even when they struggle. Yeah. LeBron James's team is not very good, and he's one of the best players in the league just like James Harden, but you don't question his effort. You don't question his effort every single time he goes on the floor, and that's the same for guys like Giannis if their team is struggling, Kevin Durant if their team is struggling. You never question their effort regardless of that, but, you know, James Harden, I think this is going to be a great fit, and I look forward to seeing them get on the court. And we don't question your effort. Clearly, you went hard yesterday during the Super Bowl. Oh, I think I know it was hard for yeah. two days. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, like anybody yeah. can go hard yeah. during the Super Bowl. That's amateur <laughs> hour. If you can't mix in an entire weekend of just let's get down, let's let's have a great time. All right. Okay? 
Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.